So I've had some people uh, request uh, a tutorial on how to set up the caller ID spoofing that I use when I call up the tech support scam phone numbers. Um, so I thought I'd just make this uh, tutorial to kind of show you how to set it up, how to create an account with uh, one of the SIP trunk uh, companies. I mean, you can use a different company. It doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, I thought I'd make this tutorial. One of the first things I want to get out of the way is that caller ID spoofing is not technically illegal. According to the FCC, um, as long as you don't intend to defraud, cause harm, or wrongly obtain anything of value, uh, then you should be okay. But then again, I'm not a lawyer, um, so do all of this at your own risk. The first thing you want to do is uh, download and install VirtualBox. So uh, you can go to this link here. I'm going to be providing all of the links in the description of the video in the order that I use them. So you go to VirtualBox and you download the version for your operating system. So I already have it downloaded and installed, so I'm just going to launch it up. Now, you're not going to have any virtual machines here, or if you have been calling tech support scammers, you might have one here. But uh, since we're doing it uh, from scratch here, um, you want to go ahead and download Ubuntu Server. So you can go to this link and uh, just download the latest LTS uh, Ubuntu Server. I've already downloaded that, and I've put it on my desktop. It's an ISO file. Okay, so you want to click on new. We're going to name it something like asterisk uh, tutorial. You want to choose Linux and you want to choose Ubuntu 64-bit. Click continue. Now you can leave all of these the default. All right, so now that we have the virtual machine created, we want to right click it and go to settings. First thing you want to do is change the network adapter from NAT to bridged. Click on OK. Oh, you also want to go into the settings and you want to go to storage, go to the CD, click on the little icon for the CD, choose virtual optical disk file, and then go to and choose your downloaded ISO for Ubuntu server. Click OK. So now when we start up, double click it to start it up, and it's going to go through the installation. So a lot of these, uh, you just hit enter. So English, oh, United States, you know, detect keyboard layout, no, English, English. A lot of these steps take a little while, so I'm going to end up fast forwarding through a lot of this. It's going to take a little longer for you guys to go through it than it's going to look in the video. Alright, for the host name, we'll just enter asterisk here so that we know kind of what it is, what it's for. Uh, the full name for the new user, you can just say asterisk, I guess. And the username, you can't use asterisk for the username, so we can just use uh, Ubuntu. Uh, you're going to have to choose a password. And re-enter the password. Uh, don't encrypt your home directory, you're not going to need that. It'll auto detect your time zone. All right, so now you want to choose guided and use the entire disk and set up the LVM. Just uh, click enter. Now you want to choose, you want to make, uh, hit the left arrow and hit yes to write the changes. Uh, enter to continue. Again, left and enter to write the changes to disk. This is the step that might take a little while. It's uh, copying the installer files and uh, installing the operating system.
when it asks for proxy information, um, unless you are behind a proxy, which you most likely are not, just hit enter. All right, then uh, you just want to say no automatic updates because you aren't really going to care too much about that. You could say install them automatically, but just say no. Here, um, hit the tab key, and then it goes to the continue, and then you hit enter. All right, when it asks to install the Grub bootloader, just say yes. All right, now it says installation is complete. Uh, then you just hit enter for continue, and it's going to reboot into your new Ubuntu server. All right, so you're going to enter your username, which we put as Ubuntu, and your password that you chose. And now you're in. So um, we could do everything in this window um, for the rest of the tutorial. But there's something that you can do to make things a little easier, um, especially later on um, in the process, and that is to install SSH. So in order to install SSH, all you got to do is do a sudo apt-get update first. And you're going to have to enter your password. Uh, then you do a sudo app get install open ssh server yes server it's going to ask you if you want to install it you put a y and you put enter now once you have open ssh installed you can run if config and you can see, I can't put the mouse over it because my mouse disappears, but you can see here to the right, uh, there's inet address and then a, a, uh, a local IP address. So mine is 10.0.1.25. So now if you're on a Mac, you can open up your terminal and type in SSH Ubuntu with the username at 10.0.1.25 going to ask, ask uh, you just type in yes and then you can enter that same password you used when you installed it and see now you're in the server this makes it a lot easier because you can copy paste things like I can uh, copy paste that link for instance but um, it makes things a lot easier later on when you have to type in links and things like that so now that we have everything set up uh, what we really want to do is create a snapshot. So you can type in exit, go to your virtual box, right click the virtual machine, close, and then ACPI shutdown. Now you go to snapshots, you right click on current state, take a snapshot, and we can say after install. That way if anything messes up we can always go back to this snapshot and you know try again from that point on. Now start it back up. Alright now if you're not running Mac um, so you don't have like an SSH command like this um, you can download an SSH client so here's one um, for Windows. Um, I cannot walk you through how to set this up but um, it should be pretty straightforward. So the next thing we want to do is install asterisk. So we're going to be compiling it from source. Okay, so we already ran uh, apt get update. So we want to uh, go into the user source folder. So cd user source. And we want to download this file. Okay, so this link here is actually bad. Um, if you if you go to um, if you go to this folder here, you're going to see that the actual file name is not certified asterisk. It's asterisk certified. So if you open it up, you'll see that uh, yeah, see they're all asterisk certified. So that's one thing I ran into when I was trying to get everything set up. 
But here's the one that we want to actually get, this uh, Astra certified 13.8 current. So we can actually take all of this up until that slash, paste it, and then the file name here. And then you hit enter. And it's going to download. Oh, yeah. Make sure you just just run sudo su, and um, it's going to ask you for your password again. So now you're the root user, and you're, you're not going to have a lot of these issues with permission denied when you're setting everything up. So, yeah, now it's downloading the file. All right, so once the file's downloaded, the, the next step is uh, untarring it. And I think we have tar. Yeah, we have tar. So you want to just run this command here. And uh, it's not, again, it's not certified asterisk. So it's actually asterisk. And then you can hit tab, and it'll complete the rest of the file. So it makes it a lot easier. Then hit enter. It's going to unzip everything. Uh, then we need to uh, CD into that new folder. So again, you can just type in CD, and then you can start typing an asterisk, and then tab. Oh, and uh, it's actually... Oh, we'll just ls. Ah, it's cert1. Okay, so we just want to type CD and then this. Okay, so now we're in the source folder. Uh, now we can start running a lot of these um, apt -get installs for all the dependencies. So the first is this apt -get install build essential. And you say yes. All right, so and the next step, once that's done, is apt -get install this one. So we'll run that and say yes. And the next one. Do the live SSL. The UID dev. This one. SQLite. And package config. All right, now I chose option number one. It's the easiest way, it's really quick. Uh, you can choose to do this more complicated route, but uh, not in this tutorial. So we just want to run this configure. It just checks to see if everything is properly set up so that it can build the source code for asterisk. All these checks uh, should say yes. I mean, there's a few no's in there, but it's uh, not important. So now it's uh, configured, it's figured out my operating system, it's ready to build. So we want to do this make menu select. And it's going to go into this. So what we want to do is go to channel drivers and we want to ch uh, select chan sip right here. So go over to it and then you hit the space bar to mark it with a star and then you hit I think it's uh, X for save and quit. Okay so when it's marked with a star you hit X to save and quit and 
that's that step. And now you're ready to uh, build it. So we do this make. All right, that probably took a long time on your computer, but it's finally done. So now we want to do the make install. Significantly shorter. Uh, the make samples. Oh, make samples. Okay. And we want to do make config. And then just confirm that it's actually set up and installed. You uh, start the Astra server with this command. Uh, looks like it started up just fine. And then we can run this to get into uh, its command prompt. And it looks like it's uh, working. So now you can just type in exit. And we want to take another snapshot now that we have everything installed. So if you're in SSH, just make sure you exit out of your SSH connection first. Um, you want to go to your virtual box again. We're going to go to ACPS shutdown. <clears throat> now you right click on current state and say asterisk installed. And then double click to start it back up. Okay, now we can SSH back into the Ubuntu server. Uh, we'll do sudo su again. Ugh, typed in the wrong password. All right, cd asterisk. Oh, okay, so now that everything's built and you're back in sudo su, uh, we want to do the next uh, thing to prep for uh, the calling to go through now that we have an asterisk server. So now you want to go to, I'm, we're, I'm using this uh, GoTrunk SIP service, so you can go to this link here. Um, uh, we're, we're not doing any of the uh, usage instructions here for installing Asterisk, because we already have it installed, but we're going to get the configuration files. So everything's a lot easier when you're sudo su, by the way, uh, when you're setting all this up. So we want to go into the etc folder. And we want to make sure we copy the asterisk config files uh, to another folder temporarily. So we run that command. And, oh, we need git. So we run this you know, apt-get install git core. And now we can git clone and get their asterisk um, configuration files. All right, um, so now uh, we want to, I'm on a dynamic IP address, and this is probably what you're going to use to set it up if you just have normal internet through a normal internet service provider. So we want to go cd etc asterisk, and we want to do git checkout dynamic IP. All right, so now you're set up with the configuration files. Now we want to edit the sip.comp file that's in this folder here. So you can use vim and you type vim sip.comp. You'll see you have all of this information here. Now in order to just get this initial part working, this replace with a proper password. Um, just you know, put whatever password you want in there for your uh, your phone login information. So you hit I for insert and then you replace all of this with, uh, we're just going to say test password. And the same thing here. So test 
password. Now you do a control C and then you do a the colon and then you do QW. Or <laughs> it's WQ. Um, and that writes the file. So now we have a user um, and we're ready to log in with our soft phone. So let's just confirm that that's actually working. So what you want to do is you want to go and download XLite. So you can go to this link and you can download it. I already have it installed, so I'm going to launch it. So what you want to do is you want to go to the preferences for it and go to accounts. And here, it's not going to be able to log into this one because it's, um, I have to, I have to erase it. Okay. Or actually, you know what? I'm just going to edit it. So when you create a new account here in XLite, you want to make sure your user ID is 201 because that's what we just configured over there in Asterisk. Um, and the domain is that same uh, IP address that you use to log in via SSH. So you want to change that to, for now it's, it's 25. And then your password is going to be whatever you typed in, which was, in our case, test password. And then you leave everything else as it is. So you click OK. And you should be able to click Enabled. Oh, you need to uh, you need to restart. So once you <laughs> once you input the new file, the new password, you need to run this asterisk dash rx in quotation marks core restart now. Uh, now we should be able to log in. Yes, so you can see it's available. It's ready. Um, if you have this, then your Aster server is set up and it's it's working. So after you edit, you put your password in. Um, you make sure to do the asterisk, uh, the core restart now, and then you're going to be able to set up your account in Xlite with the domain, the IP address uh, that you used to SSH into it, and that password that you entered in. So once all that's set up, it's, it's good to go. So what we should do is exit our SSH session again. Um, shut down. And take another snapshot. And start it back up. So the next step is to create um, an account on GoTrunk. So what I'm going to do for this tutorial is I'm just going to use a throwaway mail um, email address to kind of show you step by step how to do this. Um, obviously, you're going to be using your own email address. So I'm just going to copy this. Now you go to GoTrunk.com and you sign up with that email address and a password. Now you're going to get an email to activate your account. So we're going to activate it here. So now that the email address is confirmed, you want to go to user profile. We're going to be using uh, this fake name for this tutorial. The billing profile. Uh, the fake address here. Dollar and I don't know Chicago. Say submit. We're going to add a location. 
And yes. Oh, you need to go to the emergency calling tab, say that you acknowledge, and then hit submit. Now you're going to be activating your free trial, and you need to input a uh, number. All right, so after you input your phone number um, and you have them call you, you're going to get an activation code, and then you can input that in. Um, I had to use a uh, Google Voice number to get that set up. Um, so now that the free trial is activated, uh, the next thing you want to do is add your SIP endpoint. So you can name this whatever you want. Um, your endpoint type should be set to asterisk. Uh, the location should be the same as you input. Dynamic IP. Uh, just leave call recording disabled and then hit submit. And you say my IP PBX is, uh, you can add an inbound number if you want. Um, plus, let's just say United States, uh, geographic, state. You can see they set up, or it's a free trial, so they're not going to charge you, but um, yeah. And then you have this new number here, so you can save that somewhere. All right, so now everything is waiting for you to get everything set up. Um, in order, to, in order to get it set up, though, you need to know what your username and password are for your SIP endpoint. So you have to click on the edit here. So outbound calls, you're going to have um, a SIP username and password here. So you just view it. So here are your user credentials. So once you have those, uh, you want to make sure you SSH back into your server again. Uh, do sudo su again. And then go cd etc asterisk. And then you want to do the um, vim sip.com. So here you want to replace your inbound SIP username. You hit I again to edit, and then you can erase all this. Your username is going to be this 12101. And your SIP password is going to be this. And then you want to make sure you replace it down here as well. So your outbound is the same. And then you do a control C colon WQ. And then you want to do that asterisk RX core restart now again. So now that all of this is, is set up, you can actually go to the dashboard and do the setup wizard again. And then um, to make sure it works, you can just enter in, I believe it's this test number here. So it's 12120001234. And it should work. You are about to enter an echo test. In this mode, everything you say will be repeated back to you just as soon as it is received. The purpose of this test is to give you an audible sense of the latency between you and the machine that is running the echo test application. You may end the test by hanging up or pressing the pound key. Yeah, this yeah, is a test. test. Yeah, you can yeah, see you can it echoes. echoes. So it works. So it works. Okay, and you could even have, at this point, you could even have, uh, you can test that phone number right here. So I'll just, 
I'll just, um, well, <laughs> I don't have a phone to test it, but you can test it and make sure the inbound calls work as well. Um, and if they do, then you're good to go. I'm not going to be uh, using my cell phone number or else it would pop up here on Xlight. Anyways, so if you do make an outbound call, um, you can click on this and say, I made a test outbound call, and then it says, oh, it found a successful outbound call. So you're good to go. So once you have this set up, you're golden. The only thing left to do is um, do the uh, caller ID spoofing, which is actually the easy part. So now that everything's set up, you know, it, it would be a great idea to uh, take another snapshot. Okay, and then start it back up. Okay, so uh, this part is actually pretty straightforward. So what you want to do is SSH back into your server. Uh, do sudo sue again. Okay, so go to cd etc asterisk. And uh, you're going to be creating a, a cool little script. So... Um, uh, there's a file, if you do vim extensions.conf, you'll see here is the dial plan. And you can see the color ID here is already there. It's, uh, it's some, I guess, UK number or something. But what you can do is you hit I and you replace all of this with, um, uh, we'll do all caps new number, okay? Control C, colon, WQ. All right. Now we want to copy the extensions. Actually, move extensions to uh, a new file, and we're going to call it um, exttemplate.conf. So you can do ls to confirm it worked. So we don't have an extensions.conf anymore, um, and that's good. So you also want to create the script. So that's what I have up here, this file up here. Um, and so I'm just going to copy it all instead of typing it in. So you want to do vim and then a new number and then paste it all. Oh. It didn't copy that first line, so it's a pound bin bash. And then uh, once you have this set up, see, it's going to basically take that template file we have and replace new number with whatever we run this script with. And then it's going to restart the Astro server. So do a control C, uh, colon WQ, and we have to make that um, writable. So you just have to run uh, this chmod plus x and then new number. So now we have this new number um, uh, and what we'll do is we'll run that with a dot forward slash new number and then we can type in one two three four five six seven eight nine zero and we hit enter Oh, well, we'll have to create an extensions comp. Oh, yeah, it's already there. So, now every time you run this, it's going to create, oh, zero, one. Now if we VIM the extensions comp again, you'll see that see it replaced the caller ID with that number. It just makes it easy so you don't have to go into Vim and then do it all again and again and again. 
uh, you can just run this script and it restarts the server and everything works. So for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, um, it's all set up and it's working. Uh, we can make a test call now. So how about I power up my my scam trolling instance here and we'll get a tech scammer number uh, hopefully I can get one go ahead and uh, go to ggmail.com Yeah, sweet, we got a number. So now you can test it out. We just uh, restarted, uh, we ran our script and our number, oh, first we wanna change our our number to uh, Joseph Anderson. So 713-253-1858. All right, now we're gonna be calling from that number. So let's uh, let's give these guys a call. Thank you for calling Technical Support. My name is Ankur Hall. May I help you? Yeah, hi. I have this message on my computer screen. It says that uh, it's um, my activation key is damaged or something, and I need to call this number. Okay, sir. Can you read that message for me so I can help you so much better? Yeah, it says the server security25.xyz is asking for your username and password. The server reports that it is mm -hmm. from 0 x uh, Eight zero zero seven zero four two four. Uh, warning: Activation key damaged, and then call help desk, and then it has this number. Okay. And may I know sir exactly what you were doing on the computer when you get this trouble? I was just trying what to. What you were doing on the internet? I was just trying to get to my Gmail. Okay. And did you open up any spam email, something like that, sir? No, no, not that I know of. Okay, and is this your own computer? You are the only one who used it? Or yeah. the one who used it apart from you? Yeah, this, this, is, this is my computer. Okay, let me do one thing for you, sir. Let me go ahead and connect you with a secure server, okay? Then I'll check the computer for you and find out exactly what is the trouble, all right? Okay. Because this message has been sent to you by the Microsoft Corporation, okay? As there is a problem in your Windows activation. Means the product key of yours has been corrupted right now. Okay. Okay. So let me just go ahead and connect you with us and let me do the work for you, all right? Okay, okay. So do one thing, have a look up on your keyboard at the extreme bottom left-hand side. You will see a Windows key, like Microsoft icon. Can you see that Windows key? Yeah, yeah, it looks like the Windows logo, right? Yes, yeah, so that's the Windows logo having four squares on it. Mm-hmm. So you need to press that Windows key down, and along with that, you need to press letter R as in Romeo. Windows and R at the same time. Okay, a little okay. wind, a little window popped up. Okay, what it says? It says it has Run at the top, and then it says type the name of a program, folder, document, or internet resource, and Windows will open it for you. All right, now type in the box for me: www. Okay, www. After that, it's C as in Charlie, okay. O as in Oscar, okay. okay, M as in Michael, okay, P as in Peter, okay, and after that, B as in Boy, okay, U as an umbrella, okay. And S as in Sam. Okay. One more S as in Sam. Okay. Dot com. Means dot com. Okay, I have www dot com. Yes, sir. That's 
correct thing you have. Now you need to click on OK and let me know what you can see after that, OK? So I can tell you that it's correct or not. OK. It looks like it's loading. It's opening up a web page or something. Um, yes, sir. And then it says secure server mm -hmm. connection, your six digit code, and then a connect to technician button. No, yes, let me provide you the code, sir. Your code is 633979. That's a security code, okay? Okay. 633979. Okay, 633979. And then I click on the connect to, to technician button? Yes, sir. You need to click on that. Okay, it says support log me in. Um, it popped up on the bottom of the the browser window. Do I click on that? Yeah, so you need to click yeah, click on the run. Okay. Uh, user account control is enabled on this PC. Please click. Hit OK. And then hit yes. First hit OK, sir, and then hit yes, all right? Okay, I did that. And I then clicked you can on see yes. my name. That is Ankur Gulati. That's my name. Oh. A-N-K-U-R, Ankur, and then my last name is Gulati. Ankur Gulati, that's my complete name. Okay. And you will see that within a few minutes, okay? Okay. Just oh. give me one or two minutes so I can just go ahead and connect you with a safe and secure connection because I can see over here your computer having a lot of infections and the problems in it. Oh, okay. First I need to, first I need to filter them. Then I need to go ahead and check that for you. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, now you can just click on the OK. OK. Oh, by the way, um, what what do you have as my uh, phone number that I'm calling from? I'm sorry? What, what, what? Your what? phone number is, step, your phone number is 713-253-1858. That's your phone number from which you're calling, sir. So. Oh, OK. All right, cool. That's right. All right, so can you please go click on the OK? Uh, okay does it work for you? Yeah, I, I clicked the OK button already. OK, just allow me one minute. All right, so you are now connected, and you can see the server move on screen, OK? OK. It's me. My name is Uncle Gulati, sir. And my employee ID is 171872. That's my employee code, OK? OK, OK from the Windows Live Technical Department. And this was the message, right? Right, right. Yeah, see, I tried closing it and it just keeps popping up. All right, so can you please tell me for what kind of activities you use this computer for? I just what go. You basically, do on this computer. I mean, I just have like you know email and um, you know mm -hmm. I watch movies. Um, you know I buy stuff online. Um, mm -hmm. You know. Okay, so first of all, it's what running I'm going tree. to do, sir, I'm going to run a quick security scan on the computer. Okay. 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 Which no problem. Which will tell us exactly what is the trouble and how we can fix the computer for you. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. Yep, he's running tree. Confirm scan. Because, sir, right now, let me just tell you, your network has been compromised by some foreign activities, okay? Oh, okay. Some foreign people are trying to access your data and the personal stuff you have in the computer. That's why your computer got blocked up and they corrupted your license key, okay? That is over here. Okay, okay, okay. There it is, sir. You can see your product ID. Oh. It is not. You can see that? Yeah, yeah. This ID is corrupted right now, okay? Oh, okay, okay. But right now you're on secure server, so this will work. And who is the main user of this computer? Are you the main user, sir? Yeah, I'm the main user, yeah. And do you do any kind of online shopping and banking on this computer? Um, you know, uh, like I said, I sometimes I buy stuff online, you know, like games or uh, movies. 
Mm-hmm. So I request you do not buy that online, okay? Because sir, right now your network is compromised. So until you get it fixed, do not do any activity like that, okay? Oh, okay, okay. We can actually share accounts as well, which we don't want. And these are the total number of attempts to try to access a computer. Okay, that is 106. Oh, wow. And today is the end time. Wow. <laughs> You can see on your screen, sir. What is it today's different time? Yeah. And uh, give me one second, sir, so I can just check your network as well, okay? Okay. But is this computer in a fixable stage or not? All right. Okay. Okay. Please, sir, if you have any kind of doubts and questions, you can ask me, okay, straight away. Oh, okay, okay. And apart from you, no one uses this, is that correct, sir? Yeah, it's just me, you know. Okay, because I can see a lot of users in your computer panel, that's why I'm asking you this question again and again, okay? Oh. But do somebody use this computer or not? Because when I run your network stats, okay, I can see these much of IP addresses are connected with your computer. Oh, wow, wow. And your network. Okay. Active connections, okay? Gotcha. So these are some foreign addresses, sir. These are some foreign IP addresses which is right now trying to access your data and the personal stuff, okay? Oh. So if they are able to access a computer, that means your access security is not working. Your network access protection is off. Oh, I see. Okay. Let me check it for you as well. Yes, it is off. You can see that over here. And that's why you have those foreign people in your network. Oh, wow. Okay. Because the actual protection is in off. Okay. And can you please also tell me, sir, how old is the computer so I can check that it is under the warranty or not? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's like a few years old, I think. Something like that. Yeah, it's out of warranty, so I can see that. Oh, okay. But your processor is very good. Oh, okay. Your processor is really good. It's i7 processor, I just see that, okay? But the thing is that the computer is not in the warranty. It's expired right now. And that's why your securities are not working, the network securities. You need to get them, okay? Oh, okay. And your system drivers are also not working. You can see that. Oh, wow. And on system drivers, so let me tell you, the biggest thing is that on your system drivers, your every application and every software runs, okay? Oh, wow, okay. If these are not working fine, so their applications cannot be, you can say, work together. And is this the first time, so you're facing this trouble? Uh, yeah, yeah, this is the first time. Okay, I'm quite surprised because this computer is in a really bad condition. I'm, I'm surprised at how it can survive anymore. So that's why I'm just confirming it with you. So basically, sir, first of all, I want you to please type your name over here, okay? Okay. And your email. Okay. So I can check that what kind of warranty is available for you, okay? Okay. Can I have that available over here? Okay. On the screen? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, it's, okay. it's, hold on, hold on, I missed a D, hold on, there we go. Okay, Janderson, rockstar, janderson.rockstar88 at gmail.com, right? Right, right. So, sir, you need two things, okay? First, a warranty, all right? Oh, hey, can, but before, before, but before, before we, uh, what, what is your, what is your, like, direct callback number? Just in case we get disconnected. Sir, our direct number is this. Let me provide you that, okay? Okay. That is our direct number, okay? My name is Ankur Gulati. 
That's my name, okay? Okay. And my extension number, all right now it's 280. Hey, uh, did, was, I right. was I infected by any kind of virus or anything? I know you were running a virus scan yes, or sir. something. So I have to check it. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. So it's that Trojan is there. Okay. Oh, okay. And Clampy is there. And Neto is infected. Oh, I see. And I hope you know what the Trojan means, right? Yeah, yeah, it means that I'm uh, connected to a scammer right now. I'm sorry? I said it, it's. I said it means I'm connected to a scammer right now. So right now you're talking to the online technical support, but Trojan is kind of thing you can say that, okay? Yeah, yeah, and I mean you're 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 a total modder chode. I'm sorry. You're you're a total modder chode scammer, you little boss DK. Wow. Anything else can I do for you, sir? Yeah, yeah. You can uh, find a real job, you little. Uh, you little uh, Bakker Chodu. Mm -hmm. So you learn Hindi very well, right? Yeah, yeah. Now I have your direct line, so that's trust cool. Me. Oh, trust me on that, sir. If I was able to speak in Hindi, then I'll let you know what really Hindi means. <laughs> how did you know it was if Hindi? If, how, how, did you, how, how did you know if it, it was Hindi unless you speak Hindi? Oh, you, you do speak Hindi, you're just not allowed to say those words on the on the phone, huh? That's what I'm saying. Trust me on that. If I was allowed to say that, so you will be in a very big trouble. You know, you can say you will have some blood from your ears. Oh no, no, Teddy Maki chewed, boss DK. So, so how long you been scamming for? No. But see, so check this out. So basically, what I can do, he just hung up. So what I can do now is get a new phone number, right? So, and I run that same script, but now I can run it with uh, a different phone number. And then call back his direct line. Oh, well, it's busy, whatever. But you get the idea. So that was the uh, tutorial, and uh, hope you liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, comment. Um, I'm sure I'll be able to answer any questions you might have, but uh, that's it. So, oh, I wonder what he's doing. Is he is he going to run SysKey? Uh, he's closing it out. He's closing it out. Oh, oh, is he restarting into safe mode? Let's see. Usually they do that. It's really stupid. See in like two seconds. Yeah. Yep, booted into safe mode. What a little motto chode. Alright guys.